Okay, guys, I'm going to do a little bit more on Ascension symptoms. Um, over the years, uh, many of us who have been raising our frequencies and activating and anchoring our chakras and the higher frequencies, um, expanding our light body, we've, uh, we've gone through some pretty um, intense physical pains as we transfigure our physical beings as we're bringing heaven that spirit body that we truly are into the physical body bringing heaven to earth merging the two and um, the higher vibrations go literally all the way to the core of our being and it shakes us up on the atomic level it it um, is rattling the cages it's uh, it's breaking up the encrustations of those lower vibrations and frequencies and all that's got to be processed throughout our body you know through our body um, many times in the past we we thought it was um, because of things that we were doing and eating and and chemicals we were involved in and that's part of it but that's you know that's more of a, a cellular level and you reach a point when you choose to cleanse your system where um, where you've done that and you've cleansed but you're still having the ascension symptoms and that is since the May 5th eclipse I'm a good proof in point for that and I found a half dozen or more friends that um, are going through the exact same thing in the masculine side that right side of their physical being and many of these people are female the right side of their physical being is in severe severe pain and with me um, it's causing a great swelling up in my hands and wrist and it is literally not just in the muscle tissue but down to the bone um, it is in the muscle, it is in the tendons, it's in the bone, it's in the marrow, and it's down at the atomic level. And it's stuck energies is what it is. And it's um, those of us who are healers and those of us who are consciously activated, holding the higher vibrations and shine our light on all these people that are not yet awake. And that helps to raise their frequency so that they can wake up. Those of us who activate the vortexes, cleanse the vortexes. And the vortexes, people don't, many people don't understand what the vortexes are. And they are uh, almost like a volcanic flume that comes earth up from the, through the earth, kind of like a straw, uh, from the magma chamber beneath that used to go up to the top of the surface and these flumes and vents, um, they carried crystals and magnetic irons and silicates and, and iron, just not even magnetic, but um, more times than not, they carried crystals and other metals. Sometimes it could be gold or silver or you know, platinum or anything that conducts electricity. And, and silicates, crystals, just like, in this computer, you have a silicon chip that holds the memory. It's the exact same thing in these vortexes. And as the, the, the flume that allowed the lava to come up through was bringing these crystals and other magnetic irons and stuff up through, they deposited along the walls. And um, just as... A generator, an electric motor, how it works is you have two conductors that are working at 90 degrees to each other. And as they pass this way, it conducts electricity in one or the other. Well, what's going on is you've got a magma chamber of the core of Earth passing through that flume that's come up through that's holding all the the metal metals or minerals or crystals or magnetic irons and as that magma is passing at a 90 degree angle to it 
it allows the electrical flow through the conductor, which is the vortex. In Hopi land, when I was there, they had a dome, uh, a spiritual fourth dimensional dome above Hopi land that kept the energies going up through those crystal vortexes from going out and into the upper atmosphere, the opposite polarity, which allows the, the flow of electricity, a positive and negative and duality. That's how it all works. Um, and part of my mission there, and it took well over a year to complete, was to, to find out what it was, why the energy could not flow through in Hopi land, which after speaking to several visionaries, um, they kept on seeing an energy dome that was put there, several energy domes that was put there. And on the 11-11 10th gate activation, when we did ceremony, we were able to pop, to crack, to fracture that energy dome. And then when we came in with, and that was 9-11 of 2011, and then on the equinox, which was, I think it was the 21st or 22nd of September of 2011, we were actually, we, we were able to break through the energy dome and the vortexes in Hopi land were activated. And there's been many, many attempts by the negative ETs to patch to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. <laughs> they can't do it. <laughs> anyway, um, I did ceremony at Titus Farm with many, many other light workers and other people who had passed through the area to who, who knew that this is what we were to do was to break that energy dome and allow the energy to flow through the vortexes, which increase, which in turn, Everybody that passes through these vortexes, it raises their frequency and um, and it helps to expand their consciousness and it starts breaking up all this crustacean, all the, the, the things that keeps their pineal from seeing or, you know, all the negativities, just like we're having ascension symptoms right now. All the old lower energies start getting broken up and discarded and thrown off. And, um, and it's a process, but the energy domes there, I knew 20 years ago when we opened the 1111 doorway, I was either going to be with the Lakota or out at Hopi land working with them during that time. And that's interesting how that all happened, but we've got these vortexes all over the planet. And any place that there is silicon or minerals or even salt water, um, anything that conducts electricity, and most everything can conduct electricity, has the potential for vortex action. And those of us who are consciously creating these vortexes or consciously clearing the vortexes from the energies, um, we absorb a lot of the lower energies and the negativity and the the lower vibrations that are there that we're either holding it or keeping it in check or not allowing it to function fine and as we begin our activation processes we get called to certain places that are these higher energy points and we're there to clean these areas. We're there to re-energize them. And in turn, when we energize them, re-energize them, reactivate them, re-anchor them, um, it helps to activate us again. It's it, it, it works in tandem. It works together. Uh, boy, that's a deep... Uh, level of understanding and, and it's not such a simple subject to cover and I know many of you um, understand what I'm saying but as we do these things any of the lower vibrations that are in the land a lot of times we are the conduit for removing them and transmuting them and we 
And we do it for other people too. And we hold on to these lower vibrations and it becomes a physical issue our clearing it out and we've got to begin to recognize that a lot of times this is not being caused by our diets it's not being caused by our work it's not being caused by anything other than where we are who we are around and the vibration that is in the area that we are transmuting and as long as we recognize that this is going on and we can become consciously aware, we can start working with the energies trying to release. And a good friend of mine, Michelle, um, who's done a lot of energy work on me and could see where a lot of my buildups had occurred, not knowing my life history, but could tell me my life history as she was pulling the energies out. She taught me some tricks. And... Um, this has really helped me out. She's also one going through this right arm issue. But the buildups of the energies as it's flowing through, if you can press and squeeze and breathe into that and then release it out through the appendage that it's hanging up in and constantly pull and flow and then work it out work the energies out that's binding up that which is creating pain pull it out of your system let it go and sometimes it can take days i mean we're we're holding some pretty major energies um last night and then shake it off if you're using one hand it's just like doing reiki or Reiki healing on someone else. We're doing it on the planet. We're doing it on ourselves. Doing it on ourselves is one of the toughest things. Our being able to heal ourselves. It's easy to heal Mother Earth. It's easy to heal other people. But healing ourselves, that can be a real challenge. And even with somebody who is consciously aware. So just work the energies. Get them to flow. Um, sometimes if it's in your lower back, your legs or your knees, you, you can do your legs and your knees and your feet fairly easy, but your lower back can be an issue and you need help with that. Find somebody in your life, either close or at a distance. Reiki works at a distance. I know many people that have worked on me from other, the other side of the planet and it's very powerful energy that you feel. But guys, we've got to clear these energies. And the more we're raising our frequency, the more those negative energies will be attracted into our field so that we can transmute them and, and allow them to be released. And this can be a really painful experience. And um, just know what's going on. Try to put your shields up to keep energies from coming into your field as much as possible but work on the energy flow consciously focus on that energy to flow through you so it's not hanging up in your body and know that you know it's not you're not dying it might feel like it, it feels like you're walking rigor mortis to me um each time i go into a higher level of vibration which occurs at new moons full moons various astrological events just like this uh last um eclipse that went on as we were aligning with the Pleiades, those vibrations that are lifting the energies lift the vibrations within our physical bodies and we go to our next level of initiation. And when every time we do, we've got to throw off those old lower vibrational energies and it's just more and more levels of it and that which we're picking up as we do our natural work. So anyway, be aware of this and um, uh, there's so many people out there telling how to's now and I almost feel some of my videos are irrelevant because uh, now everybody's starting to talk. Everybody's sharing information and speaking openly and that's really cool and I'm so thankful for all you guys that are doing that. Um, that's how we're changing the planet. You got to come out, got to speak up, talk to everybody about the ascension. It's going down. It's going down now. Your thoughts are creating your reality. Anyway, that's enough for this vid on assumption symptoms. Bye for now. Ouch. <laughs>